and welcome. 1963 is an infamous, unfinished miniseries published by Image Comics in 1993. The six-issue series was written by Alan Moore, with artwork by Rick Veach, Steve Bissett, and Jim Valentino. Inking was mainly handled by Dave Gibbons, Veach, and John Tottleben. Chester Brown and Melinda Gebby also provided inks on a few issues. Finally, the lettering was done by Don Simpson and John Workman. That was a lot of talent working together on one project. The final issue, which was going to be an 80-page annual, never materialized, leaving the overall project without a conclusion. According to those involved, 1963 will never be finished or reprinted, despite multiple efforts to finally get this story complete. In 1993, Image Comics had literally just begun, and it was an immediate, undeniable success. The seven founders went from being superstar creators to being superstar millionaires in a matter of months. This mix of instant success and ego would soon lead to a lot of infighting and petty competitiveness within the company. One could argue that one of these early, divisive competitions between the Image founders was over Alan Moore. At the time, Alan Moore had all but disappeared from mainstream comics. While he was producing material, most notably Lost Girls and From Hell, his work was sporadic and being published by small, obscure companies. He had also lost a fair amount of money self-publishing two issues of Big Numbers, an ambitious project he produced with the artist, Bill Sienkiewicz. More to the point, he had sworn off working for either Marvel, due to their legal threats concerning the Marvel Man name, or DC, due to his multiple disagreements with their business practices. So enticing the most popular, well-regarded writer to work for Image Comics would not only be a victory over the two largest companies in the industry, but it would also lend the company a level of prestige it was lacking. After all, in the beginning, Image Comics was all style and very, very little substance. A writer of Alan Moore's caliber would improve the perception of the company overall. However, it would be unfair to mischaracterize this implied motivation as fact. There was, seemingly, a genuine enthusiasm to work with Alan Moore and to give him a mainstream home to showcase his work to a wide audience. The 1963 project began with Jim Valentino. Valentino originally wanted to get Steve Bissett and Alan Moore together again and to have them do something in the same vein as their previous collaboration, Swamp Thing. Valentino approached Bissett with the idea and then Bissett got in touch with Moore to see what he thought. Moore wasn't interested at all in repeating a past success, so he countered with a proposal to do a deadpan superhero comic, like Marvel Comics did in the 60s. Valentino liked the idea and the project officially moved forward. Although, one suspects it didn't matter what Moore proposed. All that mattered was he was willing to write a comic book for Image. Rick Veach was brought on board very shortly thereafter to help Bissett and Moore craft this concept into something concrete. 1963 was planned as six different but interconnected titles, with an 80-page annual that concluded the overall story. The general idea was to gently parody the main titles of Marvel Comics from the 60s, while showcasing the differences in comics from that era with comics of the grim and gritty 90s, as personified by the Image Comics characters. The intent was to highlight how different or grown up the medium had become in the past 30 years. Presumably, at the end, it would have likely suggested that different and grown up didn't necessarily equate to being better or more interesting. Every aspect of the comic book series was meticulously designed. This included covers, logos, letter pages, pinup pages, and advertisements featured in the comics. For the most part, it was Bissett and Veach who took care of these aspects, with, of course, Alan Moore's input. Moore notoriously detests the business aspects of his profession, so Bissett and Veach took on that responsibility. They oversaw all of the editorial and production details of the series, and they coordinated communication between Valentino, Image Comics, and Alan Moore. The comics themselves were produced in the Marvel style. Moore would give a detailed plot to Veach and Bissett, and they would pencil the pages accordingly. Afterwards, Moore would get the faxes of the completed pages, and he would then write dialogue to go along with the artwork. They also tried to work fast and loose, trying to recreate the sweathouse spirit of how comics were produced in the 60s. Meanwhile, Jim Valentino worked behind the scenes to get permission from the other Image founders to allow their characters to be used in the concluding annual. According to both Veach and Bissett, the first few months were a refreshing, creative time. Then, well, then it all began to change. At the 1992 San Diego Comic Con, Jim Valentino intended to announce the 1963 miniseries. However, before an announcement could be made, there was one important detail that needed to be ironed out. 
There was no contractual agreement in place between the 1963 creative team and Image Comics, nor had all the Image founders signed off on the usage of their characters in the concluding annual. While the Image panel was literally in progress, negotiations were taking place with Steve Bissett and Rick Veach at the same convention. It was at this time that Jim Lee took the opportunity to insert himself into this project. This massively popular, highly successful artist offered to draw the concluding annual if the 1963 project could be announced during the image panel currently going on. Beach and Bissett looked at the massive crowd at the image panel and made the only rational decision possible. If Jim Lee agreed to draw the annual, and if the profits were split as previously discussed, the project could be announced. With the tentative agreement in place, Jim Valentino announced the 1963 project. Immediately after Valentino, Jim Lee announced he would be drawing the annual. According to both Bissett and Veach, the 1963 annual became a Jim Lee project at that point, and by implication, so was the entire miniseries. In other words, it looked like Valentino's announcement was simply a way to introduce the project on behalf of Jim Lee. This was a cheap but effective ploy for Jim Lee to claim credit for something he had absolutely no involvement with prior to the 1992 convention. For the record, following this announcement, neither Veach nor Bissett would have any meaningful contact with Lee, this despite their numerous attempts to discuss specifics with him. However, both Valentino and Lee would be one-upped by Todd McFarland shortly thereafter. Presumably, after this 1992 convention, McFarland contacted Alan Moore and hired him to be the first guest writer on Spawn. This issue, Spawn No. 8, debuted two months before the first issue of the 1963 miniseries. So, while Valentino brought Alan Moore to Image Comics, and Jim Lee announced he would draw an Alan Moore comic, it was McFarlane who actually first drew and published an Alan Moore story. So, in the petty competition between the Image founders, Todd McFarlane was the winner. With the publication of Spawn No. 8, the Image money tap began to flow for Alan Moore. According to both Bissett and Veach, once this occurred, Moore's interest in 1963 began to wane. While working on the fourth issue, Moore became harder to reach, and his contributions to the extra material, letter pages, advertising, and such, became non-existent. It's believed that Moore was being pulled in a lot of directions by many people at Image, and with that one issue of Spawn, he made a substantial amount of money. Furthermore, he probably didn't put too much effort into the script. He may not have entirely phoned it in, but Spawn was far less challenging than, say, From Hell or V for Vendetta. The point being, with a minimal amount of creative energy, he could make buckets of cash scripting a high-profile image comic. So expending a lot of effort on 1963, which sold poorly in comparison to other image titles, seemed to become a low priority for Moore. Just as Alan Moore was beginning to script the 80-page annual, Jim Lee announced he was taking a year-long break from drawing comic books. In reality, this break would extend for three years, until 1996. Of course, this break effectively put the 1963 annual on hold until Jim Lee decided to begin drawing again. At that point, Alan Moore stopped writing the annual, having only produced 10 or 11 pages of script. The timeline of what happened next, and when it happened, is somewhat unclear. So these chain of events might be slightly out of order. A year passes and Jim Lee is still on hiatus, and not responding to inquiries made by Rick Veach or Steve Bissett. At some point, Rob Liefeld is either suggested or volunteers to draw the 1963 annual in place of Jim Lee. Nothing comes of this. Again, for reasons that are unclear. Steve Bissett, frustrated by Moore's ambivalence and the lack of communication from Jim Lee, resigned as co-editor of 1963. He intended to provide the necessary artwork, should the annual become a reality, but he was done stressing himself out and trying to pull this project together. Neither Alan Moore nor Rick Veach took this news very well. Meanwhile, Alan Moore wrote a bunch of Spawn-related material, a 14-issue run of Wildcats, and a significant run on Supreme. He was also producing Lost Girls and From Hell. In 1996, Jim Lee returned to writing comics for Marvel. Along with Rob Liefeld, they would revamp the core Marvel titles and then quit when their year-long contract was complete. Basically, to cut to the point, 1963 became a casualty of principle and indifference. Jim Lee clearly had no interest in 1963, but he was interested in working with Alan Moore on his own properties. For his part, Alan Moore holds a person to their word. Jim Lee agreed to draw the annual. Thus, Moore expected Lee to draw the annual, 
After all, that was the original agreement made in 1992. Anything else was likely unacceptable, because that changed the terms of the original agreement. And more, seemingly, holds fast to details like this, regardless of the effect it has on the project. So Moore waited for Lee to notify him when he was ready to start drawing his script. At that point, Moore would write the script. And it's not unlikely that Lee was waiting for Moore to send him a script so he could schedule a time to draw it. In a way, it was a bit of a power struggle between two egos to see who would blink first. Rinse and repeat, year after year, until entropy sets in. In 1996, Steve Bissett gave an extensive interview to the Comics Journal. In this interview, he discussed the particulars of 1963 and tried to explain, as best he could, why the ending had never materialized. Alan Moore was quite displeased with this interview. He phoned Bissett and informed him never to contact him again. According to Bissett, they've not spoken since that brief conversation. Two years later, in 1998, legal ownership of the characters and trademarks to the 1963 titles were divided among the various creators. This was initiated by Bissett, who believed it was absurd he was in a partnership with someone who refused to speak to him. An agreement was reached, and all the characters were split among Alan Moore, Steve Bissett, Rick Veach, and Jim Valentino. As part of this agreement, Alan Moore specified that 1963 could not be reprinted by Bissett, despite Bissett owning all the relevant copyright and trademarks. More years pass, and various publishers approach Moore, Beach, and Bissett, offering to reprint and fund the completion of the 1963 story. Unfortunately, no one was willing to offer the cash necessary to make the project happen. At one point, DC offered to buy the entire 1963 property. Again, the money offered was minuscule and easy for the creators to turn down. It wasn't until 2009 that the fate of 1963 was finalized. According to a prepared statement by Beach and Bissett, Dynamite Entertainment stepped up and proposed a deal to reprint 1963. As he did with Miracle Man, Alan Moore agreed to this reprint as long as his name was removed from the comic and his share of the profits went to the appropriate collaborators. However, while the contract was being finalized, Moore changed his mind and made it clear he wouldn't approve of a reprint collection. The implication being, there are no terms that Moore would consent to in order to allow for the project to be reprinted. With that, 1963 became a dead property. Beach and Bissett had spent many years behind the scenes, fielding offers, and trying to find acceptable terms to get this project either reprinted or completed, preferably both. They had even worked out four different endings for the story, should Alan Moore decide not to participate in its conclusion. But this was their final attempt. In the end, money, ego, and principle got in the way of any creative need to finish the 1963 miniseries. And, according to all involved, there is no resolution possible to bring the series to a proper conclusion. At this point, it will never be finished, and it will never be reprinted. In my opinion, many of the elements Alan Moore applied to 1963, he also applied to his Tom Strong series in the late 90s. Both series are fun and entertaining, without being simplistic and juvenile. Certainly, they are nostalgic for a simpler time which, ironically, Alan Moore's earlier work helped bring to an end. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.